Hello everyone, this is DA from e Academy and today we will solve an example using the differential equation and we will see why the weighted residual method is important and how we can solve problems related to it. So let's specify the functions and the domain here. Let a of x is equal to x, c of x is equal to 1, and f of x is equal to 0. And the domain is from 0 to 1 with boundary values that u at 0 is equal to 1 and a of x, that is x du by dx at x is equal to 1 is equal to 0. And the number of elements we have 2. So capital N is 2 here. So we have a specified differential equation now and we have to expand this approximate function here. So we can write it at c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2 plus phi0. So here we have to specify phi1, phi2 and phi0 such that this approximate function would satisfy these, these two boundary conditions. Now here we have two parts. This is the first part and this is the second part. This part is usually known as the homogeneous part and this part is known as the non-homogeneous part. Why we have homogeneous and non-homogeneous form? It does relate to the boundary conditions. So what should be phi 1, phi 2 and phi naught? It closely relates to that phi 1 and phi naught should satisfy the boundary condition in the homogeneous form and phi naught should satisfy the boundary condition in the non-homogeneous form. What does that mean? This means that phi 1 at 0, phi 1 at 0 should be equal to 0. This is the homogeneous form. And so as with phi 2. So phi 2 at 0 should also be equal to 0. But phi naught, because this is the homogeneous part, it is what it is. So phi naught at 0 should be 1, that u naught is equal to 1. And here, phi 1, phi 2, so here what should be the homogeneous part? x d phi 1 by dx is equal to 0. Because this is 0 initially, so there will be no difference in the homogeneous part and the non-homogeneous part. So the x d phi naught by dx should also be equal to 0, just as x d phi 2 by dx. So this is what there is a difference between the homogeneous boundary conditions that are satisfied by the phi 1 and phi 2 and the non-homogeneous boundary conditions satisfied by the phi naught. And there is no standard procedure for these functions which implies that there is no unique function that we will use here. So there are many possibilities of these functions and I'm just assuming three functions that satisfy these things. So for example, we have phi 1 is x squared minus 2x and let phi 2 is equal to x cubed minus 3x and let phi not be equal to 1. We are with the approximation function of this type. Now what we have to do, we have to plug this u of x here because we have to approximate the solution of the, the differential equation. So we are plugging the value of u of x here, the derivative here and taking the derivative again. We will have these things that x cubed c2 plus x square into c1 minus 9c2 minus x into 6c1 plus 3c2 plus this is equal to zero. So we have to figure out the values of the coefficients here. So that's why we have to equate this equation according to the variables that we have. So if we equate the equation for x cube, we get c2 is equal to zero. And if we equate for c x2, we get c1 minus 9c2 is equal to zero. So let so we have this after equating. That is obvious here that c2 is equal to zero here. And if we plug the value c2 here, then we get c1 is equal to zero. So and it is also true that c10, c20, we get 0. But here, if we plug c10, c20, then we have 1 is equal to 0 here. And that is not true, which implies that this system is inconsistent. 
and there is no solution for this system but eventually we have a solution of this we have to approximate the solution of this whole system and that's why there is a need of the weighted integral method that we have to integrate over the whole domain with the weight function and the residual to find the approximate solution of these type of structures that do have an approximate solution but when we solve the differential equation like this they will show no solution but eventually they have an approximate solution and that what our job is to figure out uh, so that's why there is a need of the weighted residual method now the weight function here is closely related to what should be the weight function and the approximation function that we have and also it is closely related to this formulation and weak formulation so in the next video we'll talk about what is the formulation and how we can figure out what is the weight function and we'll solve um, an example according to this weighted integral so this is for now leave for more such videos and you can subscribe to this channel you know to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye